estimated that we, we spend about uh, 100 to $125 billion on food. And then we spend about $10 billion getting rid of the effects of all that food we consume. That means almost 10% uh, almost of the amount of money we spend on food is also spent on trying to lose weight as a result of the food that we ate. I've been overweight for probably about two years. I think I'm about 15 pounds, and I carry it mostly here and down here. And my mother's always bugging me to do it, you know, to get on a diet, and she gives me not-so-subtle hints. How's the diet going? Are you losing any weight? Did you step on the scale today? And she stopped asking. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think she's given up on me. So I'm going to do it now. One of the greatest things that's happened to the publishing business has been the diet book. The idea of one diet book just leads to the principal idea for the next diet book, and so there's a continuum. Mayo's diet, mayo's diet, you name it, I've been on it, Stillman. The grapefruit diet, you know, you eat grapefruit after each meal. Or as much fat as you want, staying off fat. And then I went on a fruit and meat diet once. High protein. I can't afford meat, so I totally can all carbohydrates. Oh, toilet all day. <laughs> Salad diet right now. And no bees. Cottage cheese and meat and fish. I tried fasting. Oh, diet Pepsi. About 20 a day. Eggs, you know, and drink a lot of water. I tried a rice diet once. Oh, the Mayo diet. and diet. Diet. Eating lettuce and ice cubes. So finally I decided to go see the doctor. Now, how much do you anticipate losing? How much would you like to lose? 15, 20 pounds. That's about right. 20 pounds. 20 pounds. I looked for a diet that I thought would be just right for me. And there were so many different kinds of diets, each giving a different system. What's the best way to do it? I think most of these books are, are fad diets. You can lose a few pounds, but they're short term. And they're very precise diets uh, which you cannot follow through life. I mean, this is this is what you have to do. You want a diet that you can lose weight on, that you can live with, that you can maintain on, rather than just going to the bookstore and buying another book. Mm -hmm. I've seen so many people. They would come in and say, well, I went on this diet for so many weeks and I lost five, ten pounds. And I stopped and I gained it all back. Sometimes I feel like a yo-yo with my weight, and I go up, and then I go down, and this I go up, and then down. This is very common, uh, but it really isn't necessary. What makes a diet a fad diet? Many diets promise you can eat all you want, but only of certain foods. Actually, eating any food exclusively becomes so boring that after a while, you end up eating less. The egg diet is an extreme example, but the principle applies to many famous diets. For example, a diet may say you can eat all the carbohydrate foods you want. Just avoid protein. While another diet may say just the opposite. If you lose weight, it's because you consume fewer total calories. These diets are boring, so they make you eager to return to normal eating. The problem with all of them is that they don't teach you anything. You don't learn a lifestyle that's going to help you keep that weight off. So you go on a diet, and you get down to about where you want to be, and then all of a sudden you have the problem of facing the same situation you faced before you started the diet. Another type of diet claims that a certain food, such as grapefruit, has a mysterious ability to dissolve fat. There really is no magical combination of foods or any magical food that's going to cause you to lose weight more rapidly uh, than would a mere uh, reduction in caloric intake. Every food contains a certain number of calories. A calorie is a measure of the energy in food. But that's only half the story. The energy your body uses each day go. is yeah. also measured in calories. Some activities burn more calories than others. But even when you're sitting still, you burn calories keeping warm 
keeping your heart beating and maintaining all your body processes. Consuming calories, using them up, it goes on all day long. And every calorie counts. Ideally, the calories you take in each day will just about equal the calories you use. But what if there's a surplus? Your body has evolved an ingenious method for storing leftover calories so that no food energy will be wasted. Just under the skin are millions of microscopic cells shaped like tiny bags Extra calories are converted to a fatty substance and stored inside the bag. Now, 150 calories may not be much, but it can add up. Repeated calorie surpluses cause the fat cells to swell up, and a 150 calorie surplus every day for a year would end up at 15 pounds of fat, because 3,500 surplus calories equals one pound. I don't care whether you eat 10 meals a day, as long as it just stays within the calorie limit uh, that's prescribed for you to lose weight. The name of the game is you have to burn up more than you take in. So uh, I don't think we'll have any trouble. If you have any problems with your diet during the course of the week, well, don't hesitate to call. But uh, I say start tomorrow and we'll do it. All right. <laughs> I think it was either the first or second day of the diet I had been invited to this party. There was so much food. It was like everywhere I turned, there was a bowl of something that I wanted to stick my fingers into. Do you try every day? I try, you know, a few months like this. But it was the first time that I really realized what I was up against. You're up against purple and the ends. You're up against cheese on crackers. And it's so hard. Since so many social situations involve eating, how can you resist those temptations? Oh, yeah. I mean, I just had a little plan of milk and wanted to eat later than I was going to eat it. What did you do then? Walked away. When I go yeah. to people's party, I won't eat. You know, I act like a sissy. I feel like <laughs> embarrassed, you know. But in my family house, I eat like a pig, you know. There are many groups which meet for the purpose of discussing the common problems of dieting and overweight. Such mutual support can be a big help in sticking to a diet. What do you, what do you think? Excuse me, Mr. Major, but you know, I'll have one, please. And then they say, no, I didn't have one. You know, you're cheating yourself. So I think many diets will, will put a person kind of out of touch with reality. It's like a prison, which they just want to break out of. So I think it's important for an ongoing situation, an ongoing maintenance of ideal weight for a person to have the right plan for them. And only that person can work, only an individual person can work that out. The doctor suggested that every night I plan what I'm going to eat the next day. And I'm trying not to go over a thousand calories this day. Keeping a list of everything you eat is one way to become more aware of what you're eating which should be the starting point of any reducing diet. And I try to write it down the night before, but sometimes it's really impossible. So I write it down the afterwards, after I've eaten the food. But when you're consuming so few calories, how can you make sure you get all the nutrients you need? The nutrients a person needs for a day include vitamins, minerals, carbohydrates, proteins, fats. Therefore, they need a variety of foods to get all these, these nutrients. You'll find calories in all of these foods, but at the same time, you need all of these foods, but lesser amounts of them. Some of the foods here, like sugar and honey, have highly concentrated calories. Just, that's just about all that is in these foods are calories. The same um, butter and margarine have vitamin A, but they're primarily just calories. For example, an egg is only about 80 calories, but if you scramble it in butter...
An apple gives you about 75 calories. But the same amount of apple baked in a pie. If you thought a potato was a high calorie food, look again. It's not the potato or the chive. Another good way to pick up extra calories is to do a lot of sampling while you're cooking. You can even pick up extra calories washing dishes. But snacking is the great American pastime. Banana cake and a seven up and some cookies. I had four pickles, five cokes. These students kept track of their snacking during one evening just to find out how many extra calories they might be picking up. I had pasta. Um, well, see, I was studying, and when I studied, I'd eat. So I ate a box of Fifth Avenue. <laughs> Fifth Avenue little bar things. You ate a box? Fifth Avenue little box? I mean, you know. So I had a box of weekends. <laughs> And we could. Get a brownie also. I didn't. <laughs> a restaurant is another place where it's pretty easy to pick up extra calories. Well, could I just get the chicken chicken with the with the sauce on the side? But after I had been on the diet for a while, I knew calories and I knew what I was doing and I felt confident enough to go to a restaurant and stay on the diet. Yeah, diet. Why don't you get the diet for tonight? Richard makes them. In the beginning, I felt self-conscious about ordering salad dressing on the side, ordering uh, just a little bit of sauce or uh, lightly buttered toast. But it's worth it to go out with friends and, and eat in social situations without wrecking the diet. Also in a restaurant, well, just generally, I'm eating much slower. So the inhaling of the quantity of the food I used to do isn't the same thing anymore. With custard and strawberries and homemade whipped cream with almonds and cherries on the top. Butterscotch to fry. A little male chocolate fudge cake. That's the one. A little banana. Chocolate cake is very good. Do you have any chocolate fudge cake? It's like a brown. Do you have any strawberries? Strawberries would be great. I feel like I'm learning a different way of eating. And because I'm not doing a crash diet of um, really strange foods combined together to lose weight real fast, but because I'm doing this gradually and taking it off, um, I'm getting used to eating a different way. Because before, um, if I didn't have vegetables, I didn't have vegetables. But now, because vegetables are low in calories and vegetables are good for me, and I can eat vegetables rather than having something bad, I'm much better off, so I'm eating healthier because I'm on the diet. Writing everything down makes you really aware of when you waste calories, you know, like a sweet roll, you know, a couple of bites of a sweet roll, you know, real quick donut down the hatch, it adds it on, it just adds it on real fast. And what I'd like to do is once I lose the weight I want to lose, to stay at that weight, to um, keep eating healthy, because or else I'll just gain it right back. Well, at the turn of the century, people, um, they could eat a lot, and it didn't, they didn't have to be concerned about overweight because they were using up the calories in exercise and energy. Today, whenever possible, we save our own energy and use the energy of machines. Some people even try to have a machine do their exercise, and that doesn't burn up any calories at all. Your chances of success on your diet are greatly increased if you increase your activity. Doctor said that uh, I should do exercise and that would help me, and. I'm jumping rope actually every day. I think it's helping. I'm losing weight faster.
And I think I'm going to start uh, a dance class. Because I'll do the same thing as jumping rope, and I've always wanted to do dance classes. You don't mind if I do? Yeah, because jumping rope alone in my bedroom is not very exciting. But I know it's good for me. I'm not going to talk about me. It's working. It's working. Hey, do you think I should run into the concert Friday night? Yeah, I think I might. I think I can lose that six pounds. Oh my god, it's so crazy. Why? Because you don't need to lose six pounds. Why? You are so skinny. That is ridiculous. I'm not skinny. I'm normal, but I'm not skinny. Hillary, no matter what the word is, you have no need to lose weight. Do you want to lose weight, though? Well, I mean, that's a totally... That's different. I mean, I... The numbers are not that important. I know I need to lose a lot of weight. And it really depends on the individual. There are so many factors that have to be taken into account in explaining why some people gain weight and others don't. Uh, the simplest explanations are uh, heredity. Some people are just um, doomed to be overweight unless they take very special precautions to avoid it. And of course, part of, the, part of the hereditary picture would be perhaps a slight metabolic difference so that they're, uh, they're putting away uh, more fat and storage than they should. We have to think in terms of of how overweight begins. It's ever so much easier to prevent overweight than it is to cure it. We always say that a fat baby is a healthy baby, but that's an idea we should change. Parents often overfeed their children. This is a time when fat cells are being formed. And overfeeding can cause excess fat cells to develop, which remain throughout life, forever making it harder to lose weight. Okay, Duncan, now you have to go to bed. Let's go. If you go to bed, I'll give you a graham cracker. Along with fat cells, habits and attitudes are also being formed. Many parents use food as a bribe. The child gets the idea that food is a reward. This attitude may carry over into later life so that as an adult, every time he feels frustrated, discouraged, or depressed, he stuffs himself with food to feel better. Many parents instill in their children the idea that it's virtuous to eat everything on the plate, whether you want it or not. And then once again, sweet foods are used as a reward. Habits build up, you know, like between 10 and 15 years of your life. And these habits are hard to break. And uh, once you, you start a diet, you know, you're trying to break this habit, and then you go back to willpower. And a lot of problems with dieting is just a lack of willpower. Are you looking at it in the light that you have, if you just go on a diet for a couple of months that you're going to lose the weight? Or are you looking at it that if you, ha you have to change your eating habits and stay with it the rest of your life to keep that weight down? You have to change it and you have to be willing to give it up. You have to be willing to give up this thing that society has built in. Oh, you have to eat three meals a day and you have to, oh, have all these coffee breaks and donuts and things. This is what society has built into you. It's not right for your body, then you, you have to be willing to change it and give up those things. I never really thought about it that way. That's very That's true. That's mainly because you're probably conditioned as a child. Like I know most children are conditioned to like, when you want to go get a snack, you know, you run and get a cookie or you run and get a piece of cake or something. Instead, I think the parents can as just as easily condition a child to run and get a carrot stick or to run and get um, a piece of fruit or to run and get something else. A child is trained from day one. But eating habits are very hard to change which is really why it's a good idea to start out with good ones when you're young. The older you get, the harder it is to change them. When you're young, you get a tremendous amount of activity, athletics. And when you get older, you sit on your um, imagination and uh, you, you wind up with hands. <laughs> you know, it's about what, what happens to you. But I think uh, because we both used to be very slender when we knew each other. There was a whole long period of time when I was working very hard, and, uh, you know, rearing a family, sending them to school, so that uh, I became quite sedentary. 
But my friends would call it to my attention. Hey, hey, man. You know, no. And I began noticing it. American men and women tend to add both pounds and inches as the years go by because while there is decreased activity and changing metabolism, eating habits remain unchanged. And you eat five pounds of sugar a month in your coffee at home, not counting coffee away from home and ice cream and other things like that. She's really letting me have it, isn't she? But my weakness is really good bread with lots of butter on it or sweet potatoes with lots of butter on them. And that, I, I find, is, um, that's my downfall. Um, those are equally um, high caloric. Instead of like losing a pound, a pound, a pound, a pound, I hit a plateau. And then just like a few right, I'm just going to give up and it's not going to happen. I'll drop two. I, I really have lost everything I want to lose. I'm down 21 pounds so far. And food and me are getting along just fine. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a big enemy. It's, I'm, I'm more in control of, of what I'm eating so that the food doesn't have power over me. That's what it's about. I've got power over the food. I wanted to look better, so I went on a diet. But now, aside from looking better, I feel great. I mean, I feel terrific. I can still deal with my sweet tooth by just having like a little vanilla wafer or something like that. Um, lots of times like I'd ask for a, just a bite out of this bird. And just one bite will be, be enough for me. Mm. So you don't want another bite? No. Yeah. That's being good. <laughs> 